Do you know the Poisson distribution? It is the distribution that describes the number of events in a fixed interval when the rate of the event is a constant. For instance, if you are fishing on a lake, then the number of fishes you catch may follow a Poisson distribution. Have you ever wondered where this formula came from? Why should it look like this? In this video, as an example of the generating function approach, we'll walk through one path that can make sense of this formula. Last time, we discussed why it's useful to consider a generating function purely as a trick to store a bunch of numbers, such as the probabilities for discrete outcomes. By using a polynomial function, we can store each number separately by associating it to the corresponding power of x. And once you store them, we can get those numbers back by manipulating this function with some mathematical operations. For instance, you can remove all the terms except one by taking several derivatives, and then you can put zero into x. Then if you divide the result with k factorial, then you get the probability value back. There are two other basic operations you can do. The first is simply putting one into x. What you get here is the sum of all probability values for all possible outcomes. That means this sum should be one. That's a nice property. Another nice operation is taking a derivative once and then plug one into x. And what is this formula? Yes, we have just calculated the expected value of the outcome by multiplying the outcome value with this probability and add them up. That's the expected value. These properties are pretty neat, but we can do all these calculations even without using generating functions, right? Yeah, that's true. But you know, even if it is a trick, a generating function is still a mathematical function, and that means you can do all kinds of manipulations too. Let me give you an example. Uh, we'll do a bet. I throw a coin, and you win if it's hat. But one thing that I want to tell you is that the coin is rigged, and the probability of having the hat is tiny. Let's say Q, a very small number, is a probability for the hat. If you repeat this coin toss n times, how many times would you expect to win? Yeah, you'll win around n multiplied q times. That's just the expected value. Then what would be the probability of winning exactly k times? Let's say if you had only two successes at the beginning, and then every following coin toss was tails. Then the probability of having this exact event will look like this. So the probability to have this particular event should look like this. This formula describes exactly one such sequence. For instance, what happens if you have had at the end, not at the beginning? So we should add all kinds of different outcomes that have the same number of successes. So how many choices do we have for distributing k successes among n trials? The answer is n choose k. So by multiplying this n choose k term, we obtain the binomial distribution formula. And given this probability for each k, you can write a generating function. That's it, right? Well, actually, there is another interesting way. Do you recall the product property of the generating functions from the last video? It tells you that if you multiply two generating functions together, we get a new generating function that captures the probability of the sum of the values. If gx is a generating function for dice, then gx squared is a generating function for the sum of the i's from two independent rows of the same dice. And we can apply the property here. Let's go back to the bet. Because every trial is same, let's just focus on a single trial. So in this single trial, you either fail or succeed. In other words, your number of success would be either zero or one. 
and the corresponding probabilities will be simply 1 minus q or q. Then we can write the generating function for this single trial. If we call it g1, g1 is simply like this. Now let's think about adding just one more trial to this. If you have two trial, then the number of successes is simply the sum of the number of success in each individual trial. So can you think of how we can obtain the generating function for these two trials? Yeah, because they are exactly the same, and because it is about the total number of successes, we can obtain the new generating function by squaring the original generating function for the single trial. So g2 becomes g1 squared, and it looks like this. So can we generalize to n trials? Easy, right? I'll let you figure out whether this is the same function as the previous one from the binomial distribution. So far, it's neat, but nothing really surprising, right? So let's play with this function a little bit more. What would happen if n goes to infinity while q is small, so that the expected value remains some finite value? Let's first rewrite q in terms of the expected number of successes, which is n times q. If we call it z, uh, q should be z over n. If we replace q in the generating function, then we get... Does this look familiar? How about this? Do you recognize it now? So when n goes to infinity, this is just an exponential function. In other words, we can rewrite the original generating function as a simple exponential function. But we should wonder, uh, can this function still a generating function? It is now an exponential function, not a polynomial function. Well, let's see whether it behaves like a probability generating function. For instance, we saw that if we plug one into x, then summation becomes just the sum of all probabilities, and the generating function becomes just one. Does it hold in this case? Let's try that. Yes, it works. So how about the expected value? What happens if we take a derivative and then plug one into x? This works too. We get the expected value. So at least for these two basic operations, it behaves exactly like the original generating function, although it is not a polynomial function. Uh, but wait, is it? As long as the function is smooth and differentiable, we can use a power series to approximate the function. That's called the Taylor series, right? Also, as you may be already aware, the power expansion is actually another way to characterize the exponential function itself. And you can also see that all the coefficients in the Taylor series is simply the formula for retrieving the values from a generating function. Which makes the perfect sense if you think about it. Now let's calculate the probability value from our exponential function. Say we want to get the probability to have k successes. Then we want to take derivatives k times, put 0 into x, and then divide it with k factorial. Because whenever we take a derivative, we get 1z out. We'll get z to the k term here. And then by putting 0 to x, we get e to the minus z term here. And finally, we have k factorial. And we got this. Does this look familiar? And yes, this is exactly the formula of the Poisson distribution. So in other words, we have just shown that the Poisson distribution is just an asymptotic limit of a binomial distribution when we have many trials with a small chance of success. So this makes sense because counting the number of events within an interval is like slicing the interval into really, really tiny mini intervals and then see whether the event occurs or not in each mini-time interval. That's like doing many, many coin tosses. 
And actually, the exactly same logic can be applied to one of the fundamental problems in network science. The most basic random graph model is called l Rani random graph model. And it goes like this. We have a bunch of nodes. For each pair of nodes, we either connect them or not with the same constant probability Q. Once we connect some pairs of nodes, then we can count how many neighbors each node has. Now the question is, what is the probability distribution for the number of neighbors? In other words, what would be the probability that a randomly chosen node has k neighbors? Have you noticed the connection? Okay, let's just focus on this one node. This node will do n Bernoulli trials with every node to decide whether to connect or not. For each trial, it will either succeed or fail, and the probability will be q and 1 minus q respectively. So if you succeed, you will have one neighbor. If you fail, you will not have any neighbor from this trial. Now the final number of neighbors will be the sum of all independent trials. So this is exactly the same question that we have answered with the bias coin toss. In other words, we now know that when the graph is large and Q is small, then the degree distribution of a random graph can be approximated with a Poisson distribution. Yeah, I thought that this was a nice example where we can use generating function to understand the connection between the two probability distributions. Thank you for watching.